The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. When it was evening that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of our Lord. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Pentecost blessings. On Pentecost, or Shavuot, on the Hebrew calendar, when God sent his promised Holy Spirit in great measure. The church was born and its mission to the world began. In our gospel reading for today, on Easter Eve, Jesus appeared to his frightened disciples, still reeling from the events of his crucifixion and death. Behind locked doors, he appeared. Peace be with you, he said and showed them his pierced hands and his side. Peace be with you, he said, and breathed on them saying, receive the Holy Spirit. The spirit of new life, just as the father had breathed life into the dead bones of Ezekiel 37, nine. The disciples had been afraid and confused, and now with this new life-giving breath, they received the needed strength to stand up, unlock the doors, and go forth to proclaim. Jesus is the Messiah. By his blood, he paid the price for our sin. He is risen. He is alive. Believe on him and live. In Acts chapter 1, Jesus told them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. For John, he said, truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses of me both in Jerusalem which for us would be Jacksonville. In Samaria, three hours and 28 minutes from Jerusalem, time-wise a drive to Tampa, and in all Judea, Florida for us, and to the farthest parts of the earth, the foreign ministry field. In the actual account of Pentecost, from our first reading today, we find men and women of faith in Jesus gathered in an upper room, with one mind in one place, waiting for the promised baptism of the Holy Spirit that Jesus had given to his disciples when suddenly a violent rushing wind filled the entire room and tongues of fire rested on each of them. All present were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. Onlookers gathered amazed, astonished, perplexed, hearing their own languages out of the lips of Galileans, causing some to marvel, some to question, and some to sneer. The normal responses whenever there is a mighty move of God. I have placed my sermon for today in this white notebook. 
because this holds the study of the Holy Spirit that the Lord led me to do a number of years ago. I was astounded by the scriptural references to the nature and to the activity of the Holy Spirit. And even more was I perplexed as to why such a large part of the body of Christ is so leery and even afraid of his magnitude and power. We don't have time for me to read all of these, but look, look, look. Page after page after page after page. The Holy Spirit moves, strives, is in, is given, fills, gives life, instructs, makes, cannot be, fled from, judges, burns, rests upon, is, has, gives, wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, the fear of the Lord, judgment, strength, peace. The Holy Spirit is upon, anoints, binds up the brokenhearted, proclaims liberty to the captive, opens prisons, unbinds, is put within, causes to rest, to walk, to keep, fills with power, judgment, might, leads, reveals, teaches what one ought to say. Ooh, I'm happy about that. Gives new birth. He quickens. The Holy Spirit is the comforter that abides with us forever. He's the comforter sent by the Father in Jesus' name. He's the comforter who came because Jesus departed. I'm just reading a few of these. We can be baptized with the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit. He dwells in us. He proclaims Jesus as Lord. He gives diverse gifts to every man to profit all. Words of wisdom, words of knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, diverse tongues. We can be led by the Spirit. We can manifest the fruits of the Spirit. We're familiar with those. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. We can live in the Spirit. We were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. He, the Holy Spirit, is the proof of our inheritance. He is wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ. Through him we have access to the Father. In him we're built together as a dwelling for God. He strengthens with might the inner man. He seals us until the day of redemption. He sanctifies us, regenerates us, and renews us. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come, said Jesus. But if I depart, I will send him to you, and when he comes, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority. He will speak whatever he hears. He will not tell you things to come. He will glorify me, said Jesus. And twice he says, he will take what is mine and declare it to you. In my personal experience, having been baptized in the Holy Spirit in 1969, I was just a baby. Three metaphors of who the Spirit has manifested himself to me to be come to mind. The first is that of a large harp in Ireland, permanently placed in the out of doors on a hill, played only by the wind. Free, beautiful, comforting, magnificent, empowering, and mysterious. The second is a very recent image, and it is that of a check I received for my upcoming birthday. It arrived firmly and substantially glued to the envelope. I knew that if I tried to peel it free, the check would be destroyed. So I simply boiled a pot of water and watched as the stuck check I held over the steaming pot 
was released from the envelope. We often compare the Father to the vastness of a mighty ocean, Jesus the Son to that cool cup of water that we can hold in our hands and drink for refreshing, and the Holy Spirit to the steam that gets things done. The Holy Spirit makes things happen in and through us. The third and final metaphor is that of a refiner's fire. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. As precious metal must be purified from the dross before it can be properly used, so the Holy Spirit purifies us, sanctifies us, changes us, so that we may be God's vessels to a broken world. Beloveds, although the sun has yet to be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, God in our day is pouring out his spirit in unprecedented ways through prophetic words, through visions and dreams, through miracles worldwide that confirm but the beginning of the fulfillment of biblical prophecies concerning Israel, the nations, and the bride of Christ before his return. I pray that you will join me in prayer for St. Paul's for the Diocese of Florida, for the Episcopal Church, and for all branches of the family, for the entire body of Messiah, and for those who are yet to join the ranks of the believing, that we would no longer be leery and afraid of the moving and the power of the Holy Spirit that with joyful abandon we would all offer ourselves as living sacrifices, doing our assignments in our spheres of influence, where we have been placed to bring God's kingdom to earth as it is in heaven, that with open arms to his fire we would yield to his call to be one, as Jesus and the Father are one, whatever it takes that the world will look upon all believers in Jesus Christ, in Yeshua, and be able to say, oh, how they love one another. I want to be part of that. That we will give the Holy Spirit free reign in our hearts, in our homes, in our friendships, in our fellowships. Free free reign in our businesses and in that which we put our hands to in our city, in our state, in our nation, and into the nations of the world. That we might all embrace the new waves of God's goodness being poured out upon us in our time, in this season. And finally, that we all might joyfully welcome the Holy Spirit's outpouring of new wine into new wineskins for his glory. The Spirit and the bride say, come, and let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty come. Take the free gift of the water of life. Amen.